Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be doing an early lineup build for this evening, November thirteenth, and it's four game NBA slate. Um, and as usual, the purpose of this is not to necessarily tell you who to play tonight, but it's to give you kind of a, a repeatable process that you can use on any slate, really, uh, using the tools that are available to you on TrueDFS. That's what most people are asking me for. Is not necessarily who I'm playing tonight, but how how to play. And this is one thing that. Again, this is this is my mission <laughs> when I'm doing these DFS videos is is to teach try to teach people how to play and try to be really the only one doing it. So anyway, we shall see. Uh, again, I imagine that the majority of you are just here to see who I like tonight. But if not, uh, then this video is definitely for you. Anyway, uh, again, this is the procedure. Number one, we're just going to go through the sheets and see what plays what players look good, and we're going to rank them in certain ways, and then we are going to uh, build the lineup and we're going to do it from a hand built uh, perspective. And then we're going to put the same projections in the Saberson and have Saberson build us different types of lineups, and, uh, portfolio of lineups, things like that. So let's take a look and see what we have. We have four games here. And one thing is uh, to note is that Cleveland Sacramento is a 10 o'clock game, which is not, it's almost an Island game, which is very important for late swap purposes in the absence of not the absence of anything else, but uh, all else being equal, uh, you should probably push as many plays back to the end as possible just to give yourself a little more flexibility. All right, so let's pull up the sheets here, and I'm going to just kind of remind everybody what I'm looking for when we uh, go through this. So here's the obviously the player name, position, and you know, all that stuff, salary, projected fantasy points, which is kind of a not an industry aggregate per se, but you know it takes different projections that I respect from the industry. I back tested some of them for accuracy and I do a little tweaks, a little tweak here and there. And this is what I, what I have is for my median projections. Then uh, point per dollar is just salary divided into fantasy points. And then um, sheets value score, which is kind of a combination of points per dollar and raw fantasy points. I think this is a very good way to, um, to rate guys. At least this is the way I do it. Um, and this is projected ownership, calculated in a similar way to projected points. And here's your minutes projection. It's not ex exactly something to look at at this level because that's already been kind of factored into the projection. Um, but I do think it's important to know on what minutes uh, projection these numbers are based. So if you feel as though, for example, that Kyle Kuzma has upside from the 31 minutes, then you know that you could probably up his projection a little bit or play him more in GPPs. Where if you think that maybe uh, Donovan Mitchell is less than 36, more downside, then you could adjust accordingly. Um, but nonetheless, here's the two things that you need to remember when you're analyzing plays using this metric. When you sort by point per dollar, this type of rating always favors the cheaper player. So what you're looking for when you sort in this way are the highest salary players possible. You want high salary players that rate well from a point per dollar perspective. And then likewise, when you sort by, well, either fantasy points or by sheets value score, sheets value score without getting too into it is a metric that, that favors the high, the high salary players. So what you're looking for in this ranking is uh, our players that are our low sell. So that's what you that's how you use this particular metric to kind of come up with good plays. Now we're not talking about correlation yet or ownership, but as far as ranking goes, I think that's a, a good place to start. So for example, um, let's sort these uh, first by sheets value score. Uh, we're looking for kind of lower salary players, and so we're looking for Siakam. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, maybe, but Vooch, Mobley, like these these types of players down here. So Siakam is going to look like a really strong play. And then Vooch down to Levine. All these seven Ks look pretty good, all the way down to Porzingis, even Jared Allen. Okay. Um, one thing also to note is that, again, this is something you have to learn by doing this stuff, but when you're trying to prioritize like whether to play these studs or not, there are two things that you need to figure out. Number one is what type of value is there on the slate? Like if there are no 
great point per dollar plays, then you're probably going to end up with a middle league build. Um, also, you should know that the she's value score for a stud like this, it's usually higher. Um, these guys and players uh, salaried around here usually have a sheets value score of over 200. So it's also, it can be noted that these studs are not exactly the greatest plays anyhow. So I'm, I'm thinking that this slate is going to be probably middling and I'm probably going to end up not playing any of these guys as far as Giannis or Sabonis or even uh, Tatum or maybe not even Mitchell. Let's uh, sort by point per dollar and see what's different over there. So again, what we're looking for over here is uh, high salary guys. Like anybody that's high salary that kind of fits up in here. And the first thing you'll notice is is guys like Pax, like Siakam. Like Siakam was one of the top rated guys in the first ranking. And he's also one of the top rated guys in this one. So Siakam is a very strong play. And then also Jared Allen, he's the top point per dollar play. And we saw he was like rated not bad. Sheets value score either. Um, to some, it looks like the best point per dollar play, which is aside from Allen, which is great. But these other guys are really, really strong. Uh, Garland, Mobley, DeRozan, Boots, like all these guys usually aren't rated higher than guys like Tory Craig when you rate them by um, point per dollar. But in this particular case, they are. So, so this this is a very this looks to me a very middling type of bill. Um, now, uh, what would be great? And I, we're going to try it, is what would happen if we just try to get all those guys in together? First of all, what would we end up getting is, well, it's not bad. Three Cleveland guys, if I wanted to. That's not bad. Three Chicago, maybe four Chicago's, if you include the Somnu. Maybe not ideal, but um, I've, I've made worse plays. And then on the outside looking in, maybe, is Kevin Herter, Leek Monk, Keith and Murray, these, these, these Sacramento guys. Sorry, I had to pause for just a second. So, I mean, I'm kind of inclined to try to put uh, a bunch of these guys in. So let's see if we can do that. I haven't even looked at the positions yet. So let's just kind of fill them in uh, here. So we'll start just right from the pot, from the top until we run into trouble. So we're going to start with the top-rated guy, which is Jared Allen. We're going to skip to Somnu for now, even though, I mean, it's such a good play because – not only does it make everything work, but he's eligible in every position pretty much, including, well, small forward, but we don't really need that. What we really need is our guards. Wow, this is so, so Garland. Yeah, so we probably want to play Garland and Asamu. So let's put those guys in. Probably do this, right? Garland, Asamu. We can we can almost definitely do this, right? Who's small forward? Oh, he played to Rosen, like it's like it's like it's nothing, right? And then Siakam was a very strong play. We might have to go down maybe into that maybe into that other value play from Chicago, but we'll get back to that in a second. Power forward. I mean, we can either play Mobley or Siakam. Let's see if we can afford Siakam. We'll get back to the other ones in a minute, but let's let's see if we get Fort Siakam. So now we just need guard forward utility. Ooh, we need a guard. So it's gotta have to be Monk or Herder or Schroeder. So who's better? I and mean, these are both the same, pretty much. But it looks as though Herder is lower owned with the same projection, so we like that. Uh, and he's lower price too. And you have Schroeder, who's, you don't get any real discount off of him. So yeah, so let's play Herder at guard, I think. Herder at guard. And then just a forward utility, 6,200 each. It looks like we should be able to do that. You can just play both these if you want. You can play Monk and Murray. Now, this is not usually what you want, like Monk and, 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 and Herder in the same lineup. 
but it makes everything else just so smooth. And wouldn't get any better than this. Uh, now, again, I think I would want uh, to make sure that Fox is out before I went and I played three Sacramentos like this. But this looks all very, very reasonable. You know, and as a matter of fact, we're going to save all these just for now. And it doesn't take too much to figure out how you can weave in other guys in that same list and make the derivatives of this uh, build work. So then what I would do next, okay, is go into Saberson and upload my projections and see what types of builds I would get. Now, what's important is to, is to know what type of contest that we're playing here, especially when it comes to Saberson, because we're going to do contest simulations that will attempt to uh, tailor our lineup specifically for the uh, contest we're playing. So what we're going to do is first, we uploaded our projections and our ownership to here. We replaced, you know, Saber Sims. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build lineups. So we're just going to build 50 lineups over here. And while this is going on, we're going to do uh, contest sim settings. So we're going to add a contest sim. Now, usually it saves it for you here. Oh, it's going to have it here. Great. So NBA, uh, where is it? The Not excellent eights, the... But we are playing the alley oop, so we're going to play that. That's the high stakes uh, MME one. We're going to use high stakes MME as the types of fields we're, we're up against. I'm going to save that. And then the other one we're going to play is the fadeaway. So we got to find that somehow. Um, range, excellent eights. I'm sure there's a faster way to do this. All right, fade away. There it is. Oops. Fade away, we'll call it fade away. We will save this like this, flagship NME. Okay, so we built 50 lineups. Actually, we built 5,000 lineups. Uh, and we're going to pick the top 50 to look at. And right now, it's just ra rating them by regular Sabre score. Okay, because it's a small slate, 10K to 50K entrance, which is what this is. And uh, you're getting similar plays to the ones we made. Right. Um, as far as exposures go, 92% Jared Allen, then DeSamu, Siakam, Garland, really just the guys that we talked about, which makes a lot of sense. Now, the next thing I would do, a couple of things you could do, is, is if you didn't want to even run a contest sim, you could put these lineups in just as is. But if you're not particularly comfortable with taking so much risk on each individual lineup or, or con construction, you could change your min uniques here to say two or three. So what this is doing is it's shuffling your lineup so that each lineup has two has three players different than the other one. And I think that's healthy um, in GPPs. So a lineup built like this would obviously be really, really strong. Um, so what we're going to do is, I mean, we could just save it right like this, but we don't need to. Uh, we can always get back to this. Let's run uh, a contest soon. And what this is doing now is it's, taking in that data that I inputted there with, with like what contests we're in, uh, which involves how many players that were, that, you know, how many entrants they're going to be, what the prize structure is. And what it's doing now is running our lineups against that field of lineups that based on Sabersim ownership, that's where they feel the majority, not the majority, the, 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 the field is going to, to be. And it's going to figure out which of these lineups are the best EV against that subset. So or against that set. So let's rank these by fade away by risk adjusted ROI and see if there's a little, there's really not that much difference, if you want to know the truth, between the Saber Sim builds with just Saber score and the contest sim builds. So I'm probably inclined just to keep one or the other. Um, sometimes I'll do a kind of combination of both, but this looks pretty reasonable. So let's uh, upload these to our entry file, which we keep, you know, we, we downloaded it. It was on DraftKings, it downloaded it to our hard drive. And we just put this up here like this. And we are going to add all these 50 lineups to the, um, to the, uh, the fade away. And you click this and there it is. You see a flutter, that means it's saved. Uh, one thing I didn't do is I didn't, do a rotation players contest sim. So we'll just use the, um, and we didn't do a splash either. 
should probably do that. Yeah, so let's 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 do this actually. You could right click to add contests in for the splash. And then uh, we already did the fade away. So let's add contests into rotation. And unfortunately, now we have to rerun the contest sims, which is fine. It'll take 30 seconds. And the other thing, again, this is my observation, is, is usually when the contest sims and the saber sim things and your hand belt thing kind of is in agreement, probably a good set of lineups. It just is. It might end up being a little too chalky, but um, the NBA is usually chalky anyway, so it's not that bad. All right, so let's go into uh, Al the alley -oop first. So this is the best lineup to put in the alley-oop. Uh, I think this is actually very similar to the one we put in already. Um, but let's, uh, yeah, we'll replace them with these. This is fine, we can always recreate later. So let's save to the alley-oop. Just unique rank, so in other words, the top rated lineup in there. Now let's go to the uh, splash, which is three entry max. Getting a little bit of a different look. This is kind of a weird build to have both have Garland, Allen, and Mobley with no uh, Mitchell. So you could change it. I mean, I could put this one in instead. It certainly makes sense. But what you can do is check this out. So, well, actually, yeah, let's get rid of this one. And then we will save this one to the splash. And then we'll go to rotation player. See what we have there. Uh, this looks pretty strong. This looks very familiar actually, right? This looks like exactly what I did in the alley -oop when I made that hand built lineup. That's pretty interesting. All right, so let's add that to the to the rotation player, we'll tell top three lineups there. And we'll just throw it in like that, boom. We will download these to the DraftKings file. Load entries. And then what I'd like to do is just double check to make sure that everything's saved. Again, I have plenty of time, so we're gonna change all this, but Again, we just wanted to go through the process. You see, Ananobi is questionable. That is something to keep a, keep an eye out. Um, and that's pretty much it. And that's going to be the process I use for both, you know, for pretty much all sports, but specifically the NBA. Hopefully, it'll give you kind of well, maybe maybe you don't want to do it exactly this way. Maybe I did something that you want to add to your current process. Maybe you want to take something I did and take it away from your process. I don't know, but. People want to know what I'm doing, and this is the way that I play. And I'll do it for tonight. Good luck, everybody.